This is Unrendered on IKTV. I am Tony Regisford, and my special guest on this edition is Ambassador Ellsworth John. He is the Director of the Regional Integration and Diaspora Unit, and also he's Ambassador to the OECS and CARICOM. Ambassador John, welcome. It's not your first time on Unrendered. No, it's not. Thank you very much Good. for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here again. I did introduce the program by talking about the substantive matter that we're going to discuss today, which is the OECS Economic Union, as prescribed by the revised Treaty of Basté, and the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, again, as laid out by the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. Now, I seem to remember when we were on the program the first time, that is exactly what we were talking <laughs> about. <laughs> Quite likely. Quite likely. And um, it, is, it is timely, however, that um, we hear how far along we are with, the, with, with, um, with this whole movement and what is, what are the retardants. So let, let's start out by telling me what the pillars are. Let's start with the OECS Economic Union. Tell me what the pillars for that are. Well, basically, since, 19, since 2011, the revised treaty of Bastia establishing the Economic Union mm -hmm. came into existence. And basically what it did was create one economic space mm -hmm. that's comprised of a body of land and a body of water. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the treaty, you will see, for example, example that on boundaries delimitation, it is mandated that the member states of OECS in negotiating boundaries delimitation with third countries, that they do it as a block. So even within the framework of CARICOM, mm. a negotiation on boundary lines between, say, Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago, or St. Vincent and Barbados, ultimately would be done within a rubric of a coordinated approach okay. by the OECS countries because we are one economic space. Right. Being one economic space also means that individuals, persons, um, goods, capital, services should move freely in that economic space. So this is what we call free movement of goods, free movement of persons, free movement of capital, and free movement of services? Yes. Good. So this is... We say free circulation of goods because it's yeah. circulating within the economic space. Within, within, within the, the confines same, the of concept. the OECS. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, since 2012, the provision, August 2012, Emancipation Day, mm -hmm. the provisions for free movement of persons came into effect. What that means is that an individual from any OECS country who is a national can move to any other country without restriction. Can move and work. And work. Mm -hmm. Now, when I, when I say move without restriction, I mean it's like moving from St. Vincent and the Grenadines to Bequi right. and asking for a job. The treaties um, prescribe that a person cannot be discriminated against in another country who is seeking employment. So if you go on Caribbean dot jobs, if you go right. on Caribbean jobs, for example. And you see one in the OECS. And you see one in Dominica. Right. You can apply and you have a right to be treated the same way like a Dominican. If you're given the job. For employment purposes. Yeah. And they can't, they can't give a Dominican um, the right over you for employment in that particular area. Right. Well, who polices that anyway? I mean, let's, let's be serious. If, if a private company advertises a, a post for whatever and a citizen of St. Vincent applies, private company in Dominica mm -hmm. advertises a post and a, a citizen of St. Vincent applies and the private company says, hold on, um, yeah, this person qualifies for the job, but well, we prefer to give a Dominican. How, how would we know that that is the basis on which that decision was Because made? they wouldn't, they wouldn't, it's unlikely mm. that they will say, we prefer yeah. to give a Dominican. They wouldn't, they wouldn't tell you. They, they, will, they will come yeah. up with a reason why that person was given preference over the, the mm. Vincentian, if that is their mindset. But it, it, the, same, the same principle applies to if another Dominican had, had applied for the job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there, there are some predetermined qualifications in person, right. employers' minds when they are seeking to employ other mm. people. 
And so it might affect a, a national from another country right. in the same way like it would. So I guess what we're so saying is... You, you, you it, can't really monitor. Yeah, but it, in the good spirit of the exactly. agreement, you exactly. should not discriminate exactly. against uh, a fellow person from the OECS. Really. Exactly. What I'll say is that initially, mm. in 2012, countries like St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Montserrat, applied all the administrative right. arrangements. And on that point, let's remind our viewers, call what you're going to say, right? But let's remind our viewers what islands comprise the OECS, because it's important to set the frame of what space we're talking about. It's the islands in the Windward Islands. Which are St. Lucia, Yes, St. Lucia. Dominica, Grenada, and St. Vincent. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Commonwealth of Dominica. St. Vincent, Grenada, and, Grenadines. and St. Lucia. Good, okay. And then in the Leeward Islands, Antigua and Barbuda. Right. St. Kitts and Nevis, or St. Christopher and Nevis, mm -hmm. and Montserrat. Mm -hmm. And in order to participate fully in the OECS Economic Union, each of those countries had to sign on to the protocol of the Economic Union. And they have all done that. So what of Anguilla and what of Montserrat? That, that is why I specified those who have signed on to the protocol, mm -hmm. because there are two associated states in fact, as of next week, mm -hmm. there will be three associated states of the OECS. Anguilla and the BVI, British Virgin Islands, are associated members of the OECS, and they have not signed on to the protocol of the Economic Union. Okay. So the principle of free movement of persons is not applying to them does yet. not apply to them yet. Mm -hmm. As of next week, when the OECS will meet Authority will meet in Martinique. Mm -hmm. Martinique also become an associate member of the OECS. Right. So in terms of our membership, full membership and associate, it will literally jump from 600,000 to it 1 million 600,000. Because it includes the population because of Martinique. Because it includes the population. Substantially of Martinique of and Martinique. then BVA and Anguilla and Montserrat. Exactly. Montserrat, coincidentally, mm -hmm. is a full member of the OECS, unlike Anguilla and the BVI, mm -hmm. and is one of the original signatories <coughs> of, the, of, of the, tr the Treaty of Bastia from back in 1981. They got some special permission um, to, to do that. Right. So let's get back to your, your point. Now that we know the countries involved. Yeah. Now, with the free movement of persons, as I, uh, I started to say, all of the countries except Antigua and St. Lucia mm -hmm. had all the arrangements in place, effective August the 1st, 2012. Emancipation Day. Yeah. But for those two countries, the decision was taken by the cabinet that they wanted to put all the legislation and legal arrangements in place, pass all the laws related to both immigration and labor mm -hmm. in place before they allowed persons to come freely into those two countries. That was done last year. So effective November last year, both of those countries were also on board. So at present, all OECS nationals can move freely across the economic space. How well known is this? I mean, I know you've done um, you know, a lot of communications around this, this program. Again, it's one of them. Um, but do you get a sense that the population of all these OECS countries actually grasp that this is a reality? I think it's known. I think it's known. Um, if, if you ask most individuals, they will tell you, yes, they know we can move. Mm. But there are other elements of the economic union regime that I think need to be put in place mm -hmm. before people start really taking taking using the benefits and let's say what being those able are. to move. For example, registry of companies across the economic space. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's a separate registry in each country. Right. So one of the things we are working on is to make sure that if you are registered in St. Vincent as a company, you can operate across the economic space. And it, quite frankly, it should be relatively easy to do. Because when you look at the 
regulations for the registration of companies. There are similarities across the board. For example, I looked at St. Lucia and St. Vincent side by side, and almost word for word, it's the same in terms of the legislation and the process right. for registration. But that is the differences in fees. Right. So, f fair enough, registration fees. So, we have to, we have to now work on harmonization of, of, of fees, registration fees and also to make sure that if you can register in one con country, you can operate across the economic space. Yeah. But that brings into question, Ambassador John, the whole thing of taxation for as, as an example. If, if, if I am registered here in St. Vincent, which means that automatically you want that to mean that I'm registered in the UACS, under whose tax administration um, am I to be compliant with? I, I, uh, you, you're almost jumping the gun. I mean, you, <laughs> you, yes, you are the... I have jumped, jumped the gun, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 I'm, I'm trying to... to, to go oh, ahead, go ahead. You're systematic. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So you have the, the registry of, of, of companies. Hmm. And then you have the ability to, for them to move goods mm -hmm. across the economic space. Now, under the regime, once a good enter into the economic space, mm -hmm. it should be able to move from one country to the next without the imposition of any additional tariffs. Right. So let's say an automobile, to use one very popular example, comes into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I'm moving to Dominica to live. I can move with my vehicle to Dominica. Without having to pay the import duties. Without having to pay any import For Dominica, because it's been paid in St. Vincent already. Because it's been paid in St. Vincent mm -hmm. already. And we all know, for example, that the import duty on a vehicle is over 100% in right. all of our countries. So mm -hmm. that is a, a significant... Um, benefit of being able to move in the economic union, mm -hmm. but it brings the question of revenue generation mm -hmm. in the member states into question. Right. And so what we, are, what we are doing at the moment is looking at a number of variables to deal with the, the whole question of impl implications of revenue. Mm -hmm. um, the whole question of establishing a revenue authority across the OECS that can either be a number of local revenue authorities mm -hmm. that interface in a regular basis under the rubric of the, of the ECCB, for example, so that there can be a revenue sharing mechanism that, that is put in place, or we can look at something like a consignment principle so that if a good come into St. Lucia, even though St. Lucia would collect the duty, Mm -hmm. If the good is consigned to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the system would be so integrated that we will know in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that that good has come in and is consigned to St. Vincent. And like at the end of the month, there will be like an automatic transfer of is resources. It's going to be far easier, however, if, and I know it's, in principle, it's far easier. I, what I'm going to suggest, I think, but to, to actually implement it. Um, I'm sure it's not as easy. But if you had harmonized rates of duty, for example, harmonized custom service charges, harmonized, um, you know, all these tariffs, um, wouldn't it be a lot easier to then have your revenue authority apportion um, the money in terms of when goods, goods are being brought in from out of the region to move to a from one port to its real destination, its final destination. Wouldn't that be easier? Much easier. The, and, and that is part of the plan. Mm. <laughs> that is part of the plan. At the moment, I'm the chairman of the Regional Task Force on the Free Circulation of Goods. And we have, we have commissioned a number of consultancies to look at different things. Mm. Um, one, a, a consultancy to look at legislation. Right. Uh, and, uh, to a consultation to look at the whole question of the revenue authority and the collection of, of revenue. We also um, have a consultation that is looking at the whole question of IT mm -hmm. and harmonizing the custom systems. Right. Yes, all of us have Asicuda Plus or Asicuda Plus Plus World. or mm -hmm. Asicuda World, mm -hmm. but having a system that in each country we will, be know, we will know what is happening in the other country. 
So we have three consultancies that are looking at those at the moment. And the fourth, a fourth consultancy that's dealing with a communication strategy. You asked the question, how many persons know what I'm talking about? Right. Where we, we, we're looking at what communication strategy we should use across the economic union to make sure that the information gets out there. All right. I, I have to stop you there because we're at the end of the first um, segment. When we come back, we will pick up on the whole plan that you're rolling out and what the challenges are. So when we come back for the next segment. No problem. You're watching Unrendered on IKTV. My guest is Ambassador Ellsworth John. More on this topic when we come back. <laughs> 